welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm super, super grateful. Um, just having a moment of gratitude here this morning for my journey and for the journey of you all, whether it's a journey that is just beginning or whether this is a continuation and you are here to get some fabulous ideas for what to do with food at home regarding um, plant-based recipes. So welcome everybody. My name is Tia Rodriguez. I am the owner and head chef for Urban Soul, which we now are calling Urban and also at Urban Kitchen. So welcome everyone. So why are we here today? Let's get into that. We are here today to veganize a culture, okay, this is all about, this is for the culture, just, you know, so you know. We are here to veganize a culture favorite, which is chicken and waffles. If y'all enjoy some fried chicken and waffles, and if this is something that you have missed along your journey, I need y'all to drop something in the comments. I need y'all to let me know if this is one of the comfort foods that you have missed since becoming plant-based. Um, what is the difference between a regular recipe and the plant-based recipe? So again, you're not going to be cooking, as, as someone who's vegan or plant-based, we're not going to be using any animal products, and you're like, well, Tia, how is the chicken if, if, you know, there's no, there's no chicken, if there's no, you know, like, how is that possible? I got you. I got you though. That's the reason we're here. I got you. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get to all that. I'm gonna get to all that. So you guys are so lucky. Let me just say in 2022, you guys are extremely lucky to be coming on board with the plant-based agenda today. Because when I first started, I did a whole bunch of research, purchased the vitamins, and then I was like, okay, now what? <laughs> so I literally, my very first recipe, I remember I called myself trying to make me a burger. I had soaked some beans and chopped up a whole bunch of stuff and put it in my blender, got some kind of flour and just made patties and I ate it and I was just like, mm -mm. Mm -mm. no, I can't. Mm -mm. So yeah, I just had a flashback. But anyway, you guys are super lucky because now there is so many plant-based substitutes that actually taste exactly like or very, very close to the actual product, right? So um, I decided to use jackfruit because it's got like a very meaty texture. Um, it's something that I often use. I use it for my pulled pork rendition. And you guys, if y'all have had my pulled Pull pork, drop something in the comments below. Yes, I'm making sure y'all are paying attention because I want y'all to get this recipe. I want y'all to get this method down. If you guys have been a witness, if your taste buds have had the opportunity to try the pulled pork, I need you to drop something in the comments. I just want to know. I just need to know. I just need to know. Okay, so I chose this because there is a lot of vegan um, chicken substitutes. You've got Gardein. You have Beyond Meat, you have the Impossible Nuggets, you have just all of these different types of vegan chicken substitutes. However, oh, and you also can do um, soy as well. You also can do like tofu and use it if it, it comes out with a fabulous chicken. Um, but you also have people that are allergic to soy, okay? You also have people that are allergic to just processed foods. They, they just don't want processed foods. I chose this because I wanted to give you guys something that actually is not processed, right? So um, what is jackfruit? Jackfruit is, is just that. It's an actual fruit. So if you guys didn't know that, it's like this big, let me see if the can has a picture. Yeah, so the can has a picture. You probably can't see it, but it's like up here in the corner. And I don't know if you guys bought a can of jackfruit or if you're using fresh jackfruit because you could do that too. But it's a fruit and it's like brown and green. And it um it's got like a weird texture on the outside, right? But when you get inside that bad boy, it has a fruit that is very similar to the texture of meat, which is kind of weird. But this is a this is a very um indigenous fruit. Um, it's very um an ancient fruit. 
and um, obviously it's just now starting to come here because I have never heard of it before. I just started hearing of it like, I want to say like in 2018 was like the first time I heard about it. Um, but so I have some here, so you guys will be able to see. And this is this is actually what what the jackfruit looks like. So even just in this. This looks like a piece of chicken breast. I'm not gonna lie, like this looks very similar to a chicken breast. And when you split it, it's got even like a, see look, it's even got like a pulled chickeny type of texture. So I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but it's like, it's like chicken and it looks like chicken, right? So if you guys have a can of jackfruit or if you purchase the jackfruit, I want you to just to smell it, right? It just, it doesn't smell really good. So you, you cannot, in my opinion, if you want to master the flavor profile of different foods, you don't want to just make something with this. This, this is not, this won't do. So it smells kind of briny. It's just not. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't use that. So what we're going to do, the first, the very first thing that we're going to do is we are going to open these up and inside the jackfruit, you'll notice like some of them have some seeds, right? So we're going to go through the jackfruit and we're going to remove the seeds from the jackfruit. That's where we're going to begin. So if you have some jackfruit, just go, just go in here and see, and it's got also this like square piece right here. And then like the jackfruit on the bottom, a lot of people cut this off and throw it away, but I find that it adds a really nice texture, like especially for chicken, right? Cause it's like mushy and then like you hit the chicken breast part. So I'm going to keep that. I, I like that flavor and that texture. I want the texture of this to be extremely similar to chicken. So I'm just going to go in here, making sure that I remove all the little pieces out, the seeds. And then I've reached one of these like brick pieces. I'm just going to cut it. I'm just going to like mush it with my finger until it breaks apart. There's no science to it. Um, I mentioned last week as well that this is you guys' journey. It's exciting because this is the start of something new. So when you step into this realm of plant-based eating, you literally are opening up a whole new like flavor palette. Like if you're bored with the foods that you've been eating, this is definitely fun you know, you can really, really explore with different options. So I've got another little seed here. I'm just going to remove that. And I'm just going to do like one cup, right? Because I'm not going to make a whole bunch of chicken breast today. We're just going to keep it simple. And you'll notice that there's a little water. Some people squeeze it out. I'm not going to do that because I'm actually going to add some liquid to this. So I'm gonna do about one cup. And we're just gonna check for more seeds in there, just remove them. Okay, there's another one. All right. So again, like if you check this out, look at this. This is very this is insane, honestly. Like, this is crazy. This is what the jackfruit is looking like already, and we haven't even done anything. All right, so what we're going to do now, we are going to take a little bit of water, and, and you would boil this. This is something that you guys would boil. I'm not going to boil it because um, I already have my finished product, but what you want, I'm just going to give you the instructions on what to do. So what you guys would do, get you some water, some filtered water, okay, and we're just going to pour in 
about half a cup or to a cup of water. All right, and this would obviously be in a saucepan. It wouldn't be on the table. But just for the sake of time, I want to make sure that I get you guys going. So do that. Then we're going to put in about a tablespoon of the, what am I using? Not chicken bouillon cube or any type of plant-based bouillon. You can use that and we're just going to put that in there. This is, pretend that this is on the stove. Um, let's see. I'm also going to add a little bit of nutritional yeast to it. I'm also going to add a little bit and we're building flavor. Okay. So when you're putting this in the pot, you're already starting the process of building flavor. The purpose of me boiling this initially is to remove that briny taste to it. I want to get all of that brine taste out. So I just added in some white pepper. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of some garlic powder, some onion powder in here, you know, just flavor it up. Boom, boom, boom. This is going to be boiling, okay, on your stove top. And what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that as it's boiling, that it, it completely evaporates. You want all of this liquid to completely evaporate into the jackfruit, right? So that's kind of what you got going on. So now that it's completely evaporated, we're going to take the jackfruit our hypothetical pot. <laughs> we're going to take it and we're going to place it into a bowl because now it's finished and it's absorbed all the liquid and now it's extremely flavorful. So we're just going to go from there, all right? Now, what you want to do next I, I actually have the recipe. So one tablespoon of the chicken broth, one cup and a half of water, um, two tablespoons of the nutritional yeast. Um, okay. All right, so two tablespoons of the methyl cellulose, or you can also use xanthan gum. So what this is, is it kind of like works as a binder. It's going to help your chicken stay together. So I have the xanthan gum. I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. And you don't want to use too much. Otherwise, it's going to be like gummy. Like you don't want to have that weird type of texture. So I'm just going to put, I only use a tablespoon because I, I don't have that much in here. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then we're also going to add some chick chickpea um, flour in here, or you can also use the fava bean uh, flour. Either one will do just fine. We're going to that. I'm just going to put how much? Should I put two tablespoons. All right, two tablespoons. One, two. Okay. So we added that in there. So this is going to, you're going to stir this around now. We're at the point where we're stirring this around. Okay. You're going to stir it up. And as you can see, like right before your eyes, it's starting to get a little thicker already. It's starting to get like, like it's starting to stick together. All of our pieces of jackfruit, the more you stir it, the more it forms like a binder. And that is exactly what we want. So we're going to keep working this. We're going to keep working this. Okay. And then as you see, look, it's like, it's like coming together to the point that every time I move it, it's like sticking together now. Okay. That's what you want to see. From here, we're going to go ahead over. We're going to go ahead and take a piece of plastic wrap. Now, why are we going to take a piece of plastic wrap? 
because we're going to form some chicken tenders or chicken breast. Which one do y'all want me to do? Y'all want me to do a chicken breast or some chicken tenders? It really doesn't matter, honestly. We'll just put this on here, okay? And as you look, look how it just, whoop, there you go. It's already in the form, right? So this is it. This is your, this is your chicken breast. Now I normally add a little bit of turmeric to everything. <laughs> Don't, I mean, you can't taste it or maybe I just can't taste it or maybe I just feel like it adds food to everything. But turmeric is really good because it, um, it's an antioxidant, anti-inflammatory. It basically just helps with everything. And also you need a little bit of black pepper to make sure that it's absorbed properly. So I always just, you know, let's just, let's just do that. Just a little pinch, just a little pinch. So what you'll do here, look, this is already for me, see? It needs about 20 to 30 minutes to go ahead and solidify the way that it should. So we're gonna yeah. put this to the side, yes. What, uh, did you mention broth? Yes, so you wanna use a, a just regular, like a filtered water. And then I have here this, um, it's called not chicken bouillon cubes and it's a plant-based broth and seasoning. So this is what I'm using. You can use a broth as well as long as it's like a vegan or a vegetable broth, that's what you wanna go ahead and boil the, um, the jackfruit in before. This is like all before you get to this point right here, you should have gone ahead and boiled it um, to basically get that brine flavor out of there and you'll boil it until it's completely evaporated. Like you don't wanna have no more liquid left and that, that's when it's ready, okay? So obviously you'll let it cool down for a minute as well. All right, so we'll put this over here. Now that that's done, we're just gonna scrape this off. All right, where are we? So this is basically gonna be your chicken breast, chicken breast, chicken breast. <laughs> and these are the ones that I've done already. So with mine, I put them in the freezer and of course you can notice they're, they're a different color. And that's, again, that's just, just my, preference with the um the turmeric as well as like all my seasonings I like to season things up if you guys have ever tried my food if y'all have ever been by the restaurant or just had food with me y'all know I seasons it up okay I don't play when it comes to the flavor I am not shy at all so you notice my chicken breast that color that's the difference this is the other one this is just for you know demonstration purposes all right so we're moving on um, we're going to make the actual batter for this, right? So I'm excited about that. We're going to make a wet batter and a dry batter. Let's go ahead and use our chickpea flour. I love ch chickpea flour for that. It works really well, like, as an egg substitute. You actually can make, like, eggs with this. Like, you can season, you can, like, put it, that, that'll be another show. That'll be another segment. So we're going to use my measuring cup. What is this? And that's another thing. Like, why is it in our culture we just don't measure? Is it just me? Like, I feel like the show, <laughs> I felt like the show should have been named something else. And I was like, we just don't measure. Like, this is really difficult. You guys are putting me outside my comfort zone right now. So this is one fourth cup, okay, of chickpea flour. And like, really, I'm serious. Like, I cook all that food. Don't even remember. It's just like it's it's just part of me. I'm such a foodie, so it just comes natural, I guess. I'm grateful. All right. For those of you that are gluten-free, now I have a lot of people here recently that are allergic to gluten, and gluten is like a um, type of wheat allergen. And obviously, like I think they put it in everything. They actually put it in a lot of stuff. So if you're gluten-free, I got this flour just for you so that you can go ahead and live your best life. You can do so much with this. And this is called Bob's Red Mill Gluten-Free, okay? And yeah, make your recipes gluten-free. So you can use this for just about anything. So I'm really excited about this product. 
just got it. And I'm not gonna make a whole bunch of flower stuff because I know that, you know, like I said, for the sake of time, I wanna make sure that we get everything done. So I'm doing two one fourth cups of flour on this side, just so I can make sure that there's enough flour to coat the chicken. I've done one fourth over here, the garbanzo bean. I'm gonna sneak a little bit of regular flour in here just because I wanna know what that's gonna be looking like, okay? So the garbanzo bean flour gives like an eggy texture. I do wanna add some um, regular flour in there just to give it a little bit of extra crisp, if that makes sense. So we're gonna do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use cashew milk as my wet batter choice. And if you're new to plant-based eating, you will find that you have a wet batter and a dry batter. We don't use eggs, obviously. And there is a, um, a product called Just Egg. If you, if you enjoy that, then you can go ahead and, and, and look into that. That would be something that you could do your dipping in and then turn around and put it. A lot of people use it and then put it in your flour. Um, but for me, I'm, you know, I'm, new, I'm not new to this thing. So I've been using the wet batter, dry batter method. And I'm gonna just put in there, that looks like half a cup in there and this this up and the consistency that i go for is somewhat of an eggy type of consistency so it looks like i need a little bit more just you know just use your eyes just just measure with your eyes that's that's what we do <laughs> this is cooking with soul so <laughs> We're gonna get all the soul today. All right, so if you guys can notice, this is what it's looking like. It's giving me a little bit like of an eggy type of a runny situation. And that's exactly what I wanna see. So this is looking good. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and season this up. I'm gonna be adding some seasonal, and I actually put the seasoning in both, on both sides. I don't know if anybody else does that, but that is what I do. I make sure that my seasonings are equal parts, so it's probably gonna be like two tablespoons worth. And then I'm gonna, again, go back with a little bit of white pepper. I'm gonna go back with a little bit of black pepper. Uh, turmeric, and I think this is, yes, this is poultry seasoning, just to give it that extra chickeny flavor. Just gonna go back in there with that. And then what else do I have? Some nutritional yeast, I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. The health benefits, we wanna make sure that we get some garlic powder and some onion powder. So I went ahead and mixed both of them. This is about two tablespoons. I'm not gonna use the whole thing, just kind of sprinkle that in there, All right? And then I'm gonna, this is what your dry batter should look like, okay? It should have a little color to it. If it's too white or pale, I would add a little bit more just to make sure that you're getting all of the flavor in. And then this is my wet batter. I'm gonna go ahead. Now, I always set my fryer to 350. So I'm gonna let this rest for a bit and I'm gonna go ahead and put my fryer at 350. If you guys are enjoying this recipe, drop something in the comments below. Let me know that you're enjoying the recipe. I'm certainly enjoying being here with y'all today. Dropping all of these jewels and all of the secret sauce for you here. I like working in a clean space. I don't know about you, but my space has to be clean. All right, so there we go. Our fryer is heating up to 350. I'm gonna go back and check on the patty that we already made, not the patty, but you know, like the chicken breast that we already made, just to see how this is going. 
And this looks fabulous. This looks really good. So as you can see, it kind of stayed together. Like I don't have to do too much. It just kind of just like a regular chicken breast, okay? And then I'm gonna go in to our wet batter and just toss it in there. Then I'm gonna go into the dry batter and I'm just gonna fluff it around because this one didn't get the proper rest time. It's gonna be a little bit longer and I would encourage you to actually put it in the refrigerator or the, or the freezer. Mine I put in the freezer but because I've had it sitting out, it's probably a little different than it was initially. But this right here, this is looking fabulous. I love the way that this, this came out. I cannot wait to try it. And especially with the gluten-free flour, I'm super excited to see the texture. I mean, obviously I already know what the texture is gonna be like, but I want you guys to see guys to enjoy and some people go back and forth like I know some people do that first and they come over here and they go back again I, I don't want to do that um my thing is always health if that's your method then you know you can do that I'm not going to do that today I don't want to put over bread it to the point where you're like biting it and it's like too much bread that's just not I don't like that so I'm going to go with mine Get a bit of a mess here, but that's okay. So I aproned up because I already knew what the situation was going to be. And this is mine. This is what mine is looking like. It's got a little color to it, which I like. I'm just going to toss it in here and then quickly transfer it into our dry batter. If I can flip it over, <laughs> quickly transfer it to our dry batter. And we have this one I did kind of like a tender. So that's a little different. Okay. That's that one. And then for our last one, oh, it smells good, guys. It smells so good. I've had it in the freezer all night. And then I transferred it to the refrigerator early this morning at like 8 a.m. so it could thaw. And then Every time I move the, the, the saran wrap, I can smell the seasonings that I put on there. I'm just like, mmm, that's no good. Mm. Can't wait to try it. Now, okay, I was like, I did this a little too good. All right, so this one is obviously a tender as well, like a chicken tender. So we're just going to take that out, and this is what that's looking like, okay? And then we're just going to go in. And y'all don't talk about me now. I wear gloves in the kitchen. Don't be talking about me. I'm only, <laughs> I'm only demonstrating today and I'm the one that's gonna eat this. So <laughs> I can use my hands. I normally typically would be using gloves. It's the best method, obviously. But my hands, my germs. So y'all don't be talking about me. Uh, she was up there cooking with her hands. Mm -mm, I'm not going to her so no more. <laughs> I'm just joking. All right, so let me let me rinse my hands. Okay. All right, so let's get these down in here. Let's get this waffle made. We only have a little bit more time. I want to make sure we get this chicken down in here. And I'm just using a, a basic fryer, a tabletop fryer that I got from Walmart, nothing too fancy. I know I've seen a lot of people use a, um, the cast iron method. You can also use the cast iron method as well. That works really good. Okay. So I'm just going to be using this today. I'm just going to throw that in there. All right. Let that cook. Down. Oh, it smells like fried chicken in here. Okay. So now that we got that out the way, let's quickly move on to the waffle. Just gonna clean this area very quickly in here, like so. All right. Waffle batter. 
what we're going to need for this is I got my cheat sheets over here, y'all. All right, so we're going to need some chickpea flour or the just egg. We're going to be using one cup of flour, a half a tablespoon of um, baking powder, a little pinch of salt, some milk, some uh, plant-based milk, a little bit of oil. I chose the coconut oil, um, vanilla extract if you'd like, but I will be using the sweetened condensed coconut milk for my sweetener. So I'm going to take some baking powder. I'm going to need to do Right, and we got one cup of flour. This is gonna make a lot. Let me, let me see what we got. That should be done. And y'all, these chicken tenders smell so good right now. I literally cannot wait. I know y'all are just as hungry as I am too. Y'all saying take care of watching me. Watching me because all right, so we're also going to try the gluten free flour on this recipe as well. Oh, all right, guys, I'm back. Okay, so we got one cup of flour. What else are we missing? We got our baking powder in. We need a pinch of salt. I got some salt right here. Just gonna throw a pinch in there. We have our plant milk. Oh, our chicken is looking so good, guys. You want to wait until it gets golden brown, though. You don't want to mess with it. Just kind of let it cook really good. Make sure that it's golden brown. But those are looking amazing so far. And we need a three fourth cups of milk. Some oil, just a little melted. Well, this is not melted enough. So, so the thing about coconut oil, it has to be melted for the sake of time. I'm not going to use this, but basically, it's the same recipe. You would make sure that this is melted down and then you would use this instead. Okay, well, I'll be using it. I don't see anything on the timer. <laughs> so, we'll use it and then it'll. It'll coagulate, if that makes sense. I have no idea what that means, but I just heard it and I liked it. So we're gonna let this coagulate. Oh yeah, so it's good. It's good. So how much do I need of this? I'm gonna need four tablespoons. So that looks like two. And we'll do another two. Hopefully, hopefully that don't look crazy. All right. So then after that, vanilla extract. Okay, so I'm not using the vanilla extract. I'm actually using condensed coconut milk because I really like the, the flavor of that. Let's see if I can get this over. All right, and I think this is like to your to your liking, so I put about two tablespoons in there just now. I want to get some sweetness coming out of that waffle. And for those of you who tried my cornbread waffle, I make it exactly the same. The only difference will be that you're just going to use half and half. So some um, flour and some of the cornmeal. So that's the only difference in that part, okay? So now we're just whisking this around. Y'all got me cooking today, boy. I am, I am cooking, like for real, for real. Okay, so that looks good. Now we're gonna go ahead and open up our waffle iron. Again, I got this 
at Walmart. It wasn't anything too fancy. You don't have to, you know, I've seen people thrift it out and go get them one from the thrift store. It's, it's up to your discretion. I'm actually going to add a little bit of milk. I think that coconut oil because it wasn't runny. Kind of nice. So I'm going to do this. Hi, Tia. Yeah. Quick questions. Um, yes. One second here. Um, what did you say you were using instead of vanilla? Oh, I'm using this. It's called sweetened condensed coconut milk, and it's by Let's Do Organic. So if you like a strong vanilla flavor, by all means, if I did vanilla, I would just eat a bean and kind of like cut it in half and, and put it in there. But I just wanted the sweetness and I also like the idea of a coconut flavor, which is what you guys have gotten anyway. Anytime that you get my, my waffles, I always tend to lean more towards that coconut flavor just because it, it adds a nice sweetness to it. Alrighty, and um, so another, I'm going to be question. also using, I'm sorry? Oh, we have another question here is, uh, can you uh, make these in the air fryer? The, the fried chicken, I haven't tried um, to do the, the air fryer method with this, to be honest, so I cannot say for certain, not these. You can try most certainly and then, you know, let me know how it worked out for you, but I personally, I go with the traditional method of the of the fryer. Um, but I do know, like, I, it might defeat the purpose. But you can always fry it and then package it in the freezer and then reheat it in the air fryer. That that would be something good to do, like you know, just to, to fry them ahead of time, use whatever oil, there is different types of oils that may help as well. Um, I don't know if you just don't want any oil at all, but grapeseed oil is a really, really good oil to use for frying. So I'm gonna take this waffle batter and it's still feeling a little, you know, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we didn't use the regular oil, I'm gonna put a little bit more milk. You guys don't have to do um, coconut oil. You can use regular oil. And also we're using a gluten-free flour, so that might make a little bit of a difference as well. This is the consistency that I wanna see. Okay, this right here is the consistency that I wanna see. So we've got our waffle iron heating up already. I've sprayed it down with my pan. And we're just going to go ahead and scoop this in here. I'm going to use this to scoop though. And I want to get a really good, perfectly centered waffle. Just want to scoop everything in here and evenly spread it around, making sure that it's in there correctly. All right. So now, going back to our fried chicken, it's looking beautiful, nice and golden brown. I'm going to drop this hatch. And I'm going to go ahead and do a little flip situation. Oh, we do we have time? Because I want to show you guys a really good um, recipe for honey mustard. So I've got this, I've got this. Please. This is very simple. We're going to take just a regular yellow mustard. Oh God. I don't do this in the kitchen, I promise you, I promise. This is my house though, so. <laughs> Cooking with salt just got real, okay? I'm just, I'm just here to let you know. This just got real. All right, so we're going to do about two tablespoons here. Okay. 
we're gonna do some agave for the sweetener. I'm just gonna, I would say like, it's up to your desired sweetness that you like, but I like my honey mustard to taste like how it does when I used to go places like Chick-fil-A and stuff like that. So I'm actually also gonna add in some tamari, just a little bit, not too much, little tiny, little tiny bit. And tamari is basically like soy sauce, but it does not have, oh, tamari, blue soy sauce, gluten-free and non-GMO. So that's basically what it is. Okay. No wheat. So that's what makes this different. Um, we're going to take, we're just going to whisk this around. I'll, I can try to see what do I have. Sorry, guys. I ran, ran out of stuff to, to whisk. I'm just going to use a regular fork. So we're going to just whisk, whisk, whisk. It's really nice here. And this is what mine is looking like. I'm just gonna taste it real quick. Oh, that's fabulous. That is fabulous. Actually, I'm gonna add a little bit more sweetener because like I said, I'm trying to get Chick-fil-A vibes. I'm trying to, you know, we gotta make it happen. We gotta, we gotta take this plant-based thing to a whole nother level, y'all. This is giving me life though, for real. It tastes so good. Mm, that's perfect. All right, boom. So. How's our waffle looking? It's not ready yet. Our chicken is here. Look at this. Can y'all see the chicken? Tell me this does not look like just a piece of fried chicken, like a regular chicken tender that you would get from Raising Cane's or anywhere. This one was more of like our chicken breast meat type one so this is what our chicken is looking like i am so excited y'all look at this i just want y'all to see the goodness in this piece of fried chicken and this was made with gluten-free flour just want y'all to know that now we're gonna take our dipping sauce and put that there like that. I'm waiting a few more minutes on the waffle, but I'm gonna do it up for y'all. I'm gonna do it up. I'm not even gonna play with it. Let's do this restaurant style. We are bringing all the urban vibes. We might as well do it right. Let's sprinkle this down with some parsley. Yes. Let's put some in the sauce there. A few more minutes on our waffle here, and we should be all set. Let me go ahead and unplug this. Do you guys have any questions while we're waiting on the waffle to be finished? Do y'all have any questions? Anything that y'all want to, to say? Any questions about any of the ingredients? I think we, oh, we got some cinnamon. See, I got y'all. I, I be knowing this is organic brown cinnamon from Organics. Okay. And then I also have hiding behind here, thank God I look back there, some powdered sugar. So we're going to be doing this right. Again, I really like the sweetness from the condensed coconut milk. So I'm going to be using this as well to top our waffle. And it looks like it's almost done. And then we've got some maple syrup for those who like maple syrup. Now the difference between maple syrup and regular syrup is basically, this is the one that comes from the tree. I just want y'all to know that. Um, I don't know if y'all thought regular store-bought syrup was from the tree, but it's not. This is 100% pure maple syrup, grade A. Um, and this is the one that actually comes from the tree. So. Yes. I'm going to uh, make a quick just uh, announcement, uh, folks. I've gotten uh, the question from a few folks about uh, the recipe 
and also from last last week's recipe. Um, I want to invite folks if uh, I will check on that to make sure uh, that we are sending it out to folks. Um, but I also will um, invite everyone if your name it doesn't appear on here as what you registered under, it makes it a little difficult for us to send out an email. So please make sure your uh, your name uh, matches what you registered for, and we'd be happy to send you uh, the the uh, the list of ingredients uh, and. Uh, I believe soon we'll be having a, a video as well that goes along with the recipes, uh, um, a short edit of these recipes that Tia's putting together. So uh, like I said, please, I invite you all to, um, if you registered with a different name than what is uh, what you have, I invite you to um, just uh, add your name and we'll be happy to send you those details. Just living better is our goal. So now we've gone ahead and taken out this beautiful waffle. Look at this, you guys. No dairy. This is a gluten-free waffle, 100% plant-based. So we have this going on right now. It's just so beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and add some strawberries to this. Like I said, I am doing it up all the way for y'all today. Y'all are getting all of this plant-based goodness. And then I'm going to top it off with some cinnamon, some powdered sugar. Uh oh, not so much. Okay. All right, some powdered sugar. And then we're gonna go in and drizzle. Let me just put this in the box. We're gonna go in and drizzle some of this condensed coconut milk over it. That is delicious. I can already tell you, this is gonna taste absolutely amazing. You guys are gonna be so happy that you joined. And I am so happy to share with you because I wanna make sure that you guys are having the tools that you need to have delicious plant-based food and recipes right from home. That's okay. We're gonna get through this. <laughs> so I went ahead and placed some uh, maple syrup in here as well. And we're just gonna drizzle this over, guys. Look at how beautiful this looks. I cannot wait to try it. I can't wait for you guys to try it. And guess what? I have to do this for the culture. You know I'm gonna put some maple syrup over one of my chickens. Sit that right over here, like so, like that. Like top of the brown says, and we're gonna drizzle some maple syrup over this fried piece of chicken, y'all. Just keeping it very authentic. And here is our delicious plant-based chicken and waffles. Cooking with Soul. Thank you guys for joining me. I definitely have to give it a, a taste test just for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and try the fried chicken and our honey mustard. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see. And you can see the chicken texture from the inside. This one was mine. This was the one I made. Which one was the one I made with you guys? I think it was this one. No, it was this one. Because it was it was shaped like a chicken breast. So I'm gonna try this one now. This is the one that you you guys made with me. Oh man, look at that. This is very chickeny, very delicious. It's crunchy on the outside. We made this with fruit. I want y'all to keep that in mind. We made fried chicken with fruit today. 
I don't know what else y'all were asking me for, but I, I gave y'all everything. <laughs> there is no more to ask for today. <laughs> y'all basically got the keys to the city here. Strawberry. Mmm. The coconut condensed milk is very light. And so it gives it like, it's not like a sugar, but it's, it's giving it a very light sweetness. And I'm just gonna dig in to one of these waffles here. Oh man, this is great. I'm trying to get me a piece, it's fighting me. Okay, and this is the waffle. You know, so here, drops my, stop, stop. Man, I cannot believe everything that we used here today was 100% plant-based ingredients. I gave y'all the secret sauce to my honey mustard. I gave y'all the secret recipe to my fried chicken with jackfruit. I gave y'all the recipe to a gluten-free, perfect waffle. I hope y'all have such a wonderful day. Thank y'all for joining me. And don't forget to register for the next one. I'm actually going to be doing the um, Black Eyed Peas over rice, which a lot of people love that recipe as well. But I'll be adding on there some other stuff um, for you guys. So I'm going to be adding collard greens and cornbread. So you definitely don't want to miss that. And so I'll just be reminding folks that we are adding the registration link for next week. The next week's demonstration will be, like I said, one week exactly from today uh, on May 4th at 12 p.m. Central. Um, and uh, please feel free, please register. Um, the registration link is right there in the uh, chat box. All right, if no further questions, thank you all so much for joining. I'm gonna finish my chicken and waffles. <laughs> bon appetit. If you would like Thanks, to- guys. Do, if you'd like to do more uh, offerings from AARP in San Antonio, you can uh, look us up in aarp.org slash San Antonio, or you can visit our Facebook page. That is AARP Taxes. Uh, thank you to everyone joining us. Thank you, Tia. Thank you.